Congratulations on making it this far. You've gained a solid understanding of the fundamental concepts of electronics, from electrons, current and voltage, to resistance, capacitance, semiconductors and inductors. These concepts form the foundation upon which we will learn to interconnect components to create functional circuits for our flight computers. To illustrate how these components come together in a practical application, let's examine our latest flight computer stack, specifically Stack Core. This central board in the stack system is crucial as it provides power to the other boards, runs the main flight program, stores flight data and handles telemetry. The most prominent component on the board is the microcontroller module, the ESP32, handling processing and communication tasks. To power the microcontroller and other components, we use a battery that we connect to this XT60 plug on the board. The battery power is managed by the LM2596 switching regulator, which creates a stable voltage of 5 volts. This regulator needs two electrolytic capacitors an inductor and a diode to function. There is also a switch on the right hand side of the board. This switch controls the regulator IC, turning it on or off and thereby controlling the power supply to all other components. We use a pull-up resistor to define the voltage level of the switch when it's not conductive. Next to the first regulator, we can identify a second voltage regulator that steps down the voltage from 5 volts to 3.3 volts. And this regulator uses two tantalum capacitors. The board features two buttons that control the reset and boot pins of the microcontroller. The reset button allows us to restart the microcontroller's program, while the boot button puts the microcontroller into bootloader mode, which is necessary for program uploads. Both buttons are equipped with a ceramic capacitor to smooth out the signals. This is important because pressing a button can cause button bouncing, which is an unwanted oscillation of the button's contact that can lead to an unreliable signal reading. Below these buttons is the USB to UART bridge, a crucial component that allows communication between the PC and the microcontroller. PCs use the USB protocol to communicate, while microcontrollers use the UART protocol to communicate. The bridge, in this case the CH340 chip, translates between these two protocols. This IC also requires a ceramic decoupling capacitor. Next to this chip, we find a micro USB connector to connect the flight computer to a PC. To facilitate automatic uploading, there is a transistor circuit on the right side of the USB to UR bridge. Without it, we would need to manually reset the microcontroller and press the boot button to start the bootloader for programming. This circuit, consisting of two resistors and two transistors, automates the process whenever you initiate an upload from your programming environment. When we connect the PCB to the PC, it receives 5V power from both the USB terminal and the 5V voltage regulator. A circuit, which includes a transistor, a diode and a resistor, manages the selection between these two power sources. Above the source selector sits the SD card, which allows our flight computer to store flight data. This SD card module is accompanied by a decoupling ceramic capacitor for stable operation. To inform the user about the condition, of the flight computer, we utilize this RGB LED, a component combining red, green and blue lights inside a single package. The board adds three resistors for the three lights to limit their current flow. Further, the board includes a buzzer for acoustic indication. Another circuit consisting of two resistors and a capacitor measures the battery voltage. Additional resistors pull up several signal lines, ensuring reliable communication with other components, microcontrollers and sensors on the connected stack modules. A stackable header at the bottom of the PCB allows us to connect other stack modules to stack core and to supply them with power. Finally, there are three more connectors. One is for connecting a camera to capture onboard footage Another is to receive signals from an RC receiver for remote control and the third is for additional connectivity between the stack core and other modules. If this overview seemed complex and you only grasped a portion of what was covered, don't worry. We'll dive deeper into these concepts in the next section on electronic circuits. 
There you'll learn about essential integrated circuits, frequently used in our designs, and how to arrange components to create a functional flat computer like this one. The full course is available on Udemy.